Hey, how's it going guys? So I recently needed a laptop and while I was at Costco, this computer caught my eye. Uh, so this is the Lenovo Legion 5i 16 inch gaming laptop. Now I'm usually not a fan of all of these gaming laptops. I think they're a little bit of a, you know, weird market, but it did have some specs that impressed me that I thought would be good for my particular usage. Uh, so let's talk about some of the features. Uh, it has a 14th gen Intel Core i9 to 24 core processor, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060, pretty impressive. Uh, it has a Wi-Fi 6E card, which I really haven't heard a lot of good things about, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, a 16-inch display, IPS 2560 by 1600, so it's a pretty good resolution for a laptop. I personally find 4K a little bit too much for laptops, especially for some programs. Uh, it shines up to 350 nits, and the refresh rate is 165 hertz, so pretty impressive, especially if you're going to be doing some uh, gaming here. Now, another thing that it has is a backlit keyboard, which is a chiclet style uh, keyboard. Now, you can change the lighting by using a set of keys, and we'll talk about that when we go over the keyboard. But if you're coming from a Lenovo ThinkPad after they released that style of keyboard, this should feel completely familiar to you. It's not that different. Now, before I go any further with the review, let me explain to you how I'm going to be using this laptop and how I specifically, quote unquote, tested it. Uh, I don't do a lot of gaming on laptops. I have a desktop for that. Uh, this laptop is mainly going to be used for CAD programs and some photo editing and video editing like the video that you're watching now. Uh, so I use a particular program called Siemens NX, uh, and it is a CAD engineering software, and we primarily use it to design parts and, you know, load large assemblies. And so I needed a computer that has a pretty good graphics card for that, uh, as well as for rendering. So this software does allow you to render uh, certain things in particular textures and materials, uh, and it requires a pretty intense uh, graphics process for that. Now, as you're going to see in a little bit, we did have a little bit of a problem with that. Uh, but as you can see on the screen here, I'm using the software uh, and it really isn't giving me that much problems. I'm not really doing anything heavy. Uh, you know, for example, I'm just coloring some faces here. But I did notice that compared to my old laptop, which was a Lenovo P1, the computer flowed through the tasks, you know, just amazingly. I didn't have any hiccups. The software didn't freeze. Uh, and I achieved everything that I wanted to within, you know, a reasonable amount of time. So I would say that for this first initial test, which is, you know, moving some faces on this model and whatnot, it passed with flying colors. So after moving the faces around on this model, I decided that it was time to enter the rendering application. Uh, and this software allows you to uh, assign certain materials to the model you're working on. So for example, here I assigned some PLA uh, and I entered the rendering environment. Now, as you can see the little error there, it's telling me that for some reason it can't access the graphics card. Uh, it has to use the CPU for this. Uh, I did not figure out why that was happening. I tried to go into the settings. I tried to you know, run the application with optimized NVIDIA settings, but every time I clicked it, as you can see here, uh, it just kept saying it couldn't do it. Nonetheless, though, I was still pretty impressed with uh, how little time it took to give me, you know, a reasonable image of this render. Uh, it is doing a layer by layer rendering here since this is a, a particular material PLA for 3D printing. Uh, but it did do very well, uh, and it only took a couple of seconds for it to actually output something that I can use for, say, a presentation or whatnot. So f even though it was using the CPU, I have absolutely no doubt that this thing will be able to give me something cleaner. So now we're getting to the juicy stuff, folks. So I have a cam model here uh, that I'm going to use to program a CNC machine. Uh, so this part I already machined. I already did everything on it, but I did want to see just how this computer can handle, uh, you know, regenerating some tool paths and calculating certain cuts. Uh, so here's the model that I'm going to use for this example here. And I'm going to regenerate the tool paths, which means I'm, I'm essentially recalculating all of the tool paths after I made a change. Now, I was actually pretty surprised because it didn't give me the results as quickly as I was expecting it to. It has a pretty uh, high level processor, 24 core processor, but it took a few seconds. I had to speed the footage up there. 
Uh, nonetheless, though, it did give me the preview, uh, and I decided to run a very quick simulation of the material removal. Now, this is usually where some computers start to struggle, especially older computers, uh, so it's showing you in real time uh, how much material it's removing. Uh, nonetheless, though, it did a good job at that, although, it, again, it still left me surprised at how slow it was on the other one. Now here I have another model open and I'm just messing around with this one just to get more familiar with it. Uh, I decided to regenerate the tool paths again and this one was actually pretty quick. It didn't have any contoured surfaces so it wasn't as difficult. Uh, so from a CAD perspective I will say that the computer performed much better than my old one uh, other than the rendering application. So I can definitely see a use for this if you're in this type of field. So now that we've gone over the computer folks, let's take a look at some of the ports that we have. So on the left hand side, you have one USB-A port, two USB-C ports, and a headphone jack. Now on the back, you have the proprietary uh, Lenovo power port and the HDMI port. The power port is like most ThinkPad power ports there. Now on the right hand side, you have the Ethernet jack, the switch for the webcam, a microSD card reader, and two USB-A ports. Now I do want to show you that if you plug in a microSD card in there, it's going to stick out a little bit, so don't throw it in your bag expecting it to be flush. Now I do welcome the USB-A ports since I still work in a field that requires them. Most CNC machines still take them. And same thing for the HDMI port, you don't need a dongle for that. So now that we know the ports around the computer, let's go ahead and close it and take a look at what is driving this computer. Now. I'm going to point out the screws to you here uh, one by one. While I do that, I do want to say that the ports on the computer are all USB 3.2, both the USB-C and the USB-A. So they're high speed USB ports. Now, one thing I did find out is that the USB-C ports cannot be used for charging. So you can't plug in a charger in there. Uh, and the USB-C ports can also be used to drive a separate display. So that's actually how I have this computer set up. Uh, but you can still use the HDMI port in the back to connect another monitor. Uh, so either way, uh, the display will work. Now, in addition, you cannot use one USB-C port to drive two separate displays. I didn't have a lot of good luck doing that. Uh, I don't know if that is an official way of using these USB-C ports. I have had other computers that can do that, uh, but this one seems to not be able to handle it. In addition to that, the HDMI version is 2.1, uh, while the Bluetooth version is 5.1. So after removing all of those screws, you can go ahead and insert a flat tool between the plastic and the other piece of the computer here. So, you know, if you're a degenerate like me, you're probably just going to use the flat end of the screwdriver. Uh, but once you do that, uh, you can unsecure the clip. So this thing is clipped on to the case there. Uh, but just keep using your flat end tool and you will eventually be able to uh, prop this case open, revealing all of the internals in this computer. So now that we have the computer open, here are the internals of the computer. Now let's go over a couple things here. Uh, the first thing I wanna point out are these two fans, both for the CPU and the GPU there. This is where you put in your RAM, and this one here is the one terabyte solid state drive. And this is the Wi-Fi card that I already replaced with one that's better. I have heard a lot of complaints about this one, so I went ahead and replaced it. Now these right here are your USB-A ports that we went over earlier uh, and there's your micro SD card reader so relatively compact little system here uh, there's the Ethernet port uh, and now let's take a look at the cooler for the CPU so there it is right there it doesn't look replaceable uh, that is the battery port so it looks like the battery is serviceable if you're interested in the specs for the battery well here they are now, I do want to say that most of the things in this computer are serviceable, so that is a very welcome thing to see because most computers now are all soldered together, uh, but this one does have a couple things that are replaceable. So here's the speakers, uh, which are okay. They're not that great. Uh, and in order to change the RAM, you have to pop out that little piece right there. So it is a little bit of a challenge. Uh, what you will have to do is use a screwdriver to insert it to a channel between that metal piece and the board just be careful not to scratch the board but once you open it you can see that there are two ram slots you know in its current configuration it's only 32 gigabytes uh, this is another port for another uh, solid state drive if you want uh, but that's pretty much it i did find this white stuff on there hopefully it's thermal paste at least that's what i'm hoping it is uh, so there was obviously some quality control issues there 
Uh, now to put it back together, all you have to do is take the case, snap it back into place, uh, and put the screws back. Honestly, it's that easy. So this computer is serviceable. It is upgradable to a certain extent. You can upgrade the solid state drive, you can upgrade the RAM, uh, and you can replace some of the components if they fail, like the battery. So that is a very, very nice thing to see. So I've shown you what the computer looks like completely open, but this is what it looks like closed, completely assembled. These are the ports in the back that we talked about earlier, and here's the logo in all of its glory. So now that we've discussed the internals and the specs of the computer, let's take a look at the keyboard. As we discussed earlier, this is a chiclet style keyboard. Uh, and I know that this was a very controversial keyboard, especially when it came out with the ThinkPad. A lot of folks were used to the old style keyboard. But I actually like this keyboard. It grew on me. Uh, I was originally part of the pack that did not like this keyboard. But after using it for many years, uh, it does have a very nice tactile feedback. Uh, so I have absolutely no complaints about the keyboard other than the function key still being reversed with the control key. But if you can get over that, it's not bad. Now, other than the Wi-Fi card, my next criticism has to be the touchpad. It's really just a touchpad, but it does feel a little bit flimsy. Uh, it works pretty well. I didn't have any issues with, you know, false uh, clicking here and there. But the fact that it feels flimsy just kind of doesn't work for me. So going back to the keyboard really quickly, if you want to change the color of the keyboard, all you have to do is hit the function key or hold the function key actually, uh, and then hit the space bar. Uh, it goes through a couple of cycles and shows you, uh, you know, just what the coloring scheme is going to look like. Honestly, I don't really care for many of these. I mainly just stick to the red one, but it's nice that you have that option. Now the display in my opinion, is one of the best things about this laptop. I had absolutely no problems with the display. Uh, as you can see here, I'm just looking at some pictures that I took on my recent trip to Chicago. Uh, and on the camera, it doesn't look that great, but trust me when I tell you that the colors were spot on. Uh, I really, really enjoy uh, the display on this computer. So remember, it's a 2560 by 1600 display. So it's a pretty high resolution as I'm considering it. Uh, and it's IPS, so you can look at it from any angle, and it's not going to give you that weird, uh, you know, black and white display there. So let's go ahead and start wrapping this video up. Am I going to keep this computer? Absolutely. It does serve the purpose uh, that I need it for, which is, you know, being a uh, CAD slash video editing slash photo editing computer. Uh, as you can see here, I'm using it on a dual monitor setup. These are both 1080p monitors. It doesn't have an issue with that at all, as I would expect it to. Uh, but I do use it for very heavy CNC programming, NC programming, uh, and, you know, video editing, especially the video that you're watching right now. This whole entire video Video was edited on this computer. Now, if you are a user who is going to be using this computer for this type of application, I would highly recommend this computer. Uh, it absolutely just flies through some of the tasks that I've assigned to it. I've been using this computer uh, as my workstation for a couple of weeks now, uh, and it has pretty much done every single task that I've uh, asked it to without a hiccup. Now, would I dare and say that this computer can replace your desktop? Absolutely not. But if you're looking for something that can do both be a laptop and a desktop at the same time, uh, I would say that this computer can achieve that pretty closely. It is very awesome. So while I like the laptop and all of the ports that it has, there are a couple of things that I want to criticize that I think fall short on this laptop. And the first one is the battery life. The battery life is okay. Uh, you know, with minimal use, you might get three to five hours of use, but if you're going to use this for CAD or engineering, understandably so, uh, it's going to fall to about, you know, one and a half hours to three hours. So just keep that in mind, especially since this computer has a dedicated graphics card and NVIDIA GTX 4060, you want to keep that in mind. Another thing that I will criticize is the touchpad. The touchpad is okay. Uh, it does feel a little flimsy, but I personally don't use the touchpad too often. I mainly use either a 3D mouse or just a standard mouse, and it doesn't really affect me too much. Now, the final criticism that I want to give is this Wi-Fi card. You need to replace it. It is absolute garbage. Uh, I will put a link to one down below, but definitely get rid of it.
Other than that though, this laptop is absolutely perfect for me. I can see myself using it for years to come and I'm actually going to use it professionally for all of my trainings and all of my engineering work. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Thank you so much.